drawing, and we're going to base it on the types of synovial joint structures we can identify. So let's call these the synovial joint structures from our lab list. And they are the joint capsule, which has an outer layer called the fibrous layer. And it has an inner slick layer called the synovial membrane. This is the membrane which makes synovial fluid. And while synovial fluid is going to be one of the things we identify, we want to always keep in mind that the synovial membrane is responsible for making that fluid. Another structure we're going to identify is the joint cavity, meaning the space between the bones that are making up our articulation. Look at the articular cartilage at the ends of these bones. It's very similar to hyaline cartilage, a little more water. We're going to identify that synovial fluid made by the synovial membrane. And then we're going to look at some accessory structures. I'll probably add a drawing of the knee to better demonstrate these things. First one is a meniscus, which is just a fibrocartilage pad between the two bone ends. A fat pad, a bursa, and let's remember there's a little odd one called a tendon sheath. And the last structure we'll see is a ligament. And we know that ligaments connect bone to bone, which is different from a tendon, which is the end of a muscle. It attaches the muscle to the bone. So a ligament connects bone to bone and a tendon connects a muscle to a bone. All right, let's draw these structures. I'm going to label this drawing synovial. <coughs> Excuse me. Diarthrotic <coughs> joint. All right, so that's what we're going to draw here. The first thing we need to do is add the two bones that are going to comprise our articulation. <clears throat> so this is a finger. There's an average digit uh, with two bones in the middle. Might be the proximal uh, interphalangeal joint or the distal interphalangeal joint on your hand, which means the middle of one of your fingers or the ends of one of your fingers, not your thumb, but the second, third, fourth, or fifth digit. Let's just say it's a frontal or a coronal section through that. All right, so we've got the two bones that make up our articulation. I'm going to add the first structure, which is the joint capsule. I'm drawing the outer part of the capsule first. This is the tough fibrous layer on the outside. I'm going to make it just a little bit different from the inside layer by striping it. Just so we think about fibers. Remember that fibers are very tough Next toughest thing we make after bone. And so when we want a bendable material, but a tough one, we're going to make it out of fibers. I'm going to call this the joint capsule, but particularly I'm 
Gonna make this piece that I've drawn here the outer fibrous layer. So I'm just coloring that a little bit different from what we're going to do with the inner layer, which as you may recall is the synovial membrane. So let's label that. So that's our fibrous layer. The interior of our joint capsule is filled, well not filled, but the interior of our joint capsule is lined. And let's use a different color that matches what we did in lab. Okay, and so for this one, I'm going to start down just a little bit on the bone. Those of you that are trying to draw it with me. Just like that, like the letter C. And we're going to do another one over here. I'm going to give this one a different color. This one green, just so we can distinguish it. Just so we can distinguish it from that outer fibrous layer. Okay, and so this is going to be the synovial membrane. I'm going to go ahead and label that. And if you'll recall, the synovial membrane makes synovial fluid. I'm just abbreviating synovial there with S-Y-N. Just don't want to forget that. Because when things go wrong, sometimes in uh, immune disorders, we'll see a difference with this ability of the synovial membrane to make regular synovial fluid. It might change. You have uh, a different space inside because of that. All right, so we've got this synovial membrane. Those two layers, the fibrous layer and the synovial membrane, comprise the joint capsule. Let's look inside this joint. Now, the space, the entire space, but I'm just demarcating it with this bracket. This entire space, we're just going to call the joint cavity. It's really just the joint space. And that cavity is filled with synovial fluid made by the synovial membrane. That's to lubricate the joints, but in addition to that, we want to make sure that the joints, uh, or I'm sorry, that the bones are protected from one another whenever they meet, and whenever your fingers are extended, and the bones tend to articulate or touch at that point. So here I'm going to color in what I've just drawn, which is the, which is the hyaline like cartilage called articular cartilage. Contains just a little more water than average hyaline cartilage. So here is our articular cartilage. And the word articular tells us we're talking about cartilage inside of a joint. as opposed to if we just called it hyaline, because again, this is a slightly different. Okay, so that blue is our articular cartilage. 
I'm going to add the idea of synovial fluid. Now to do that, I'm just going to put the pretty much the sign for water, which are just some waves in here. And we'll note that synovial fluid is in this space. And we could highlight that. this color here, we'll just think about that as being fluid inside that space, without which we wouldn't be able to call it a synovial joint. So now we've got our structures, and let's double check our list, make sure it looks like we're missing the ligament. So let's add a ligament. Now where I'm going to add a ligament is on the outside because I want to connect the bone to the bone. This is a bit different than the joint capsule. The ligament doesn't uh, have an interior that is a synovial membrane, so that's one way it's different. I'm just going to extend these structures a little bit. Let's pick a different color for our ligament. Now I'm going to pass through this area same area where the bracket is. I'm just going to go down. I'm only going to do it on the one side so that it's not so busy over there. Let's choose a yellow. Oops. Let's choose yellow. For our ligament. Note that it would be on both sides. In this particular type of joint in the knee, you'll see it inside uh, and outside. You know, those as medial and laterals. We'll look at those in just a moment. But for now, let's label that yellow one as a ligament. Okay, and there we have a joint, uh, a diarthrotic synovial joint with all of our structures from the lab list. I'm going to move on, and let's look at the accessory structures. Okay, so let's look at accessory structures that we're going to see in a synovial joint. And to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and label this as accessory. And I know we added ligament to the last picture, but we're going to add it to this one as well. And so we need a meniscus, we need a fat pad, a bursa, and a ligament. Okay. So in order to do that, I'm just going to draw the knee from a sagittal view. It's a very simplified Knee with the condyles. I'm going to set it on top of the tibia. We're going to leave the fibula out of this drawing for clarity. Actually, I'm going to move this back just a little bit. Okay, so where this will be the posterior, this will be the anterior, superior and inferior. Here we have the femur. And here we have the tibia. And again, we're leaving the fibula off for clarity. I'm just going to add the patella in here, which rides on the anterior surface of the knee. The patella is trapped inside of the patellar tendon. which is an extension of a quadratus muscle called rectus femoris. And we said that this is the muscle, and that a tendon 
would connect a muscle to a bone. This is the patella. So this would be a tendon because it connects muscle to bone. Conversely, this would be a ligament. This is the patellar ligament because it's connecting bone to bone. It's connecting the patella to the tibia. Just a little thing, but something to be aware of uh, if this happens to be within your scope to treat. So now let's look at our accessory structures. A great place to put a meniscus would be in the joint. A meniscus is a fibrocartilage pad It's really tough. I'm only going to draw it from the side. I think I would place it here and I'll draw one from the front shortly. From an A to P view so you can see that. I'm going to color this meniscus something different than the bones. Let's make the meniscus red because it's so famous. And you'll see meniscal tears debris from meniscal shearing, little injuries and things. So meniscus will be red in this picture. Let's add a bursa. You remember that a bursa is a synovial filled sac, synovial fluid filled sac. So I'm just going to think, where would I put a bursa? Well, it would probably be pretty smart to put a bursa near where a bone is going to be so close to the skin. I'm erasing some things that I have a little more room over here. Let's try that again. So right here where the patella is going to ride up under the skin of the knee, here's the skin of the knee, as it would pass over, it would be good to put a little pad right here just to protect the skin from the bone underneath it. So let's make this the bursa. This is called a prepatellar bursa because it's in front of the patella. There are several bursa uh, in these type of joints, but we're only drawing this one. It's protecting the skin and all of the structures that are under the skin directly under from friction from the patella every time you move your knee, which is quite often for most people. So let's draw, let's just color this one a little different. So our bursa will make dark green. And of course, I'm not drawing all the subcutaneous tissue underneath the skin and everything. We're just doing this very simply so that we can see where you would put a bursa. And I'll fill this in just a little bit more. The bursa kind of conforms to the bone that it's against. And again, it's a fluid filled, it's a synovial fluid filled sac. reduce friction between a bone and some thinner structure. You'll find them at the olecranon, at the ends of your elbows, uh, at the ends of your ischial tuberosities, anywhere that the bone is uh, poking out towards the skin. Now let's add some fat pads. Fat pads are to fill in empty spaces. So I'm just going to throw one back here. I fill in this little gap here. Maybe put one in here about that. There's several fat pads around the knee. Let's color that yellow. And a fat pad has a synovial membrane on the outside, but on the inside is fat. So that's different. It's not fluid. And fat tends to look like globules. Do you remember? If you've ever seen any representation of fat, Try to make that a little different for you. So 
This is a fat pad. It fills in spaces. I'm not spending time on the meniscus and just drawing because we're going to do one more just about that. So we've got our bursa, which is our fluid filled sac. It's filled with synovial fluid. And if you've ever heard of bursitis, you know that when the bursa is inflamed, it has its own pathology. Here we've got fat pads filling in the empty spaces. And we're going to have a meniscus which is a fibrocartilage pad. It's a tough fibrocartilage pad between two bones, also to reduce friction. And then that last one we had uh, was our ligament here. And since we're looking at the interior of the knee, I don't want to add one. The cruciate ligaments would make it very complicated here. Uh, I can add those on another drawing, but we'd have the ligament on the outside going from bone to bone, or we have our ligament uh, that we already drew here, this uh, patellar ligament. So let's make that one a little bit different color as well. And just say our patellar ligament is blue here. That gives us all four structures that we need. We've got our meniscus, fat pad, our bursa, and our ligament. And the last thing we're going to do is look at the knee from the anterior view. If I were to draw the knee from the anterior view, I might be able to see the meniscus a little bit better. So let's do that. So this is just the knee. I'll label this one. Knee. Okay, so this will be the knee from the anterior view, and this is the knee from the sagittal view. This will be our knee. Let's go frontal or coronal. Really closer to an A to P view, but we're going to make this really simple. So here I'm just going to draw the condyles from the front with our intercondylar space there. And now we've got our tibia plateau. Right, again, we're leaving off the fibula. So here is the femur. Here are the condyles. Similar to what you saw here, this is a condyle. Okay, and then here's the tibia. Just real quick where I would put a meniscus. It'd be in this space. It's kind of a horseshoe shape. It takes the shape of the top of the tibia very much. I'm not drawing everything in 3D or anything. Just to keep it a little simpler. But here is the meniscus. We said that was a fibrocartilage pad to reduce friction between two bones and an articulation. That should be all of our identifiers that we needed to look at. Okay, thanks for visiting.